Hey guys, welcome back to day 107 of grinding until I become a millionaire. These are just my daily check-in videos. I'm I'm just trying to get rich. I'm trying to figure it out. I'm trying to build something here. And so I figured, well, I'm just going to document my whole journey, document my thoughts. And yeah, so right now I'm in an interesting spot. Um, I'm working more than I'd like to. I've built up a little bit of passive income with a couple with a couple YouTube channels and a website. Um, I've learned quite a bit about growing a personal brand, I'd say, growing a YouTube channel. I've able to monetize two channels. Um, and yeah, so anyway, I'm just trying to trying to figure out what I need to do to grow grow my income and, and make it. I think what I'm working towards, my main goal right now is just to build up the passive income so that I can work less. I serve right now um, part time. I think I only work 20, 25 hours a week and then the rest of the stuff pays the rest of the bills. Um, but I'd like to get that to the point where $5,000 a month is my goal with the YouTube channels and the brands. I mean, 10K would be perfect, but at 5K, I think I could not have to work another job and I could spend all of my time growing my brands. Um, so yeah, so that's what I'm working towards. That's where I'm at. And I'm getting exhausted. I'm getting exhausted. Usually I just wake up and just keep chugging along. But by doing these daily check-in videos, man, I get kind of stressed out. I'm like, what is going on? Because um, I, I just, it just feels the exact same. Every single day feels the exact same. I wake up, I edit a video or I respond to emails or or just kind of procrastinate because I don't want to work on it right away. I don't know. <sighs> but 106, so di yesterday I didn't post a video. I actually went to bed at like 8 o'clock. I just laid down and passed out. I've been so tired, which is kind of funny because the clip I posted earlier today was like, I think sleeping is a waste of time or something. And like people are commenting. <laughs> the comments are funny, man. The comments are super funny. One guy said <laughs> the sleep deprivation has bro's logic all fucked up. And I'm like, yeah, maybe that's true. You know, it's like one of those things where the less you sleep, the more delusional you get and the less you think you need sleep. I don't know. I've been, I've been running low for a couple years now. I'd say easy a couple years now. I can't think back to a time that I just like was caught up on like two three years ago is when I started trying to figure out how I could get less sleep like I got a whoop so I could track my recovery and see what things helped me get into deep sleep better so that I could deep sleep more and like real like full sleep less and it's, it's just been a whole journey of trying to figure out how to maximize my time by cutting out sleep and but I definitely burn myself out on that like I get really tired I pass out I sleep for a good amount and I kind of catch up or I reduce my sleep debt so to speak and that's what I did last night like I got in bed eight o'clock passed out woke up at midnight edited for a couple hours and then um edited one of these videos actually for a couple hours like then crawled back into bed at three and woke up at nine or so so <laughs> Maybe it wasn't a whole lot of sleep. I don't know. It should be about eight or nine hours altogether. I don't know. Didn't do the video because I like didn't like I just went to bed early and it's 10 o'clock right now and I'm actually filming this super early. Usually I film this at like one or two o'clock, but I'm getting tired and I'm like, I'm just going to listen to my body. I'm going to film this. I'm going to get it up and then I'm going to go to sleep. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, no caffeine has been rough, man. I didn't think it affected me because I didn't need it very much. Or like when I drink something, when I drink an energy drink, I wouldn't feel anything. But it's like, I think it just kept me there all the time because now, now I'm getting so tired around nine or 10 and like yesterday eight. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. What I heard is it has a half-life of 24 hours. Maybe it's a half-life of 12. I think it's a half-life of 24 hours. So every 24 hours, like half of it's in your system. And so if I've been pounding 600 milligrams a day for the last year, then I'm cracked, cracked on caffeine. So I don't know, we'll see when it gets out of my system next year, <laughs> um, what that looks like. But anyway, we're just, I'm just trying to be healthier. Um, I went to sign up for a gym membership today 
which is funny because I canceled my Planet Fitness membership when I moved here because it sucked, but I got an EOS membership and I kind of like it, kind of upset I had to get the expensive membership to not pay a $50 startup fee, but it's, it's all good. I got a free body scan and my, uh, what, my fat percentage, what's it called? I can't think of it right now, but my fat percentage is like 12%, which I guess is pretty low or good, like pretty good. I'm pretty lean. And I was like probably 210 when I started the one meal a day thing, like 45, 50 days ago. And now I'm 190. So I've lost like 25 pounds in over a month and a half. Uh, just by doing the one meal a day, which is pretty crazy. I'm not trying to get super skinny, but I do want to shed off the body fat. And I think doing so, like I've been pretty strict with it. One meal a day, chicken, broccoli, potatoes, sometimes beets, sometimes peas, like I'll substitute the vegetable in there. But um, that's been pretty much it. it. And I've cut back on snack, like no snacking and granola bars if I get really hungry, apple juice if my sugar gets low, and then sometimes if I'm at Walmart and I'm getting groceries, I'm like, oh fuck, and I'll have a candy bar. But you're pretty good for the most part. Like, you know, be honest with you guys, not perfect, but pretty good, like enough to lose 25 pounds. And I didn't even feel like I was overweight, but I, I like the, the thin face. I think that's nice, but went back to the gym. We're gonna try and get in better shape and bulk up a little bit now. Um, it was really interesting to do that body scan. Uh, today was Monday, so today is just a day that I try and plan my week. It's been, I've cut back on a lot of the delegating and stuff and just tried to focus on working on my one objective. That's the one I set a couple weeks ago. Um, review all the bikes that I can in February or in January. Try and get 50 different YouTube reviews up on my second channel and I've just been working towards that. Finished editing one of the reviews today. I've got two more I need to edit. They just get so boring. It gets so boring, man. And I'm really excited to get done with that because after I do that, I wanna spend a little bit of time on the main channel and like really storytelling, like writing, scripting, creating really good videos, what I would call good videos. And I have fun when it's like that, as long as I can see the project through. Like I have fun, it feels like a little bit of a journey where I'm like, okay, now I've got to get these shots and now I've got to do this. And then I spend the time editing um, and, and I need that time to just focus on that. And I learn a lot from it. And so once I finish this objective for January, I think that'll be my next objective in February is to grow the main channel like pretty exponentially. I've got some plans, I've got some video ideas and some things I wanna work on, um, but I just need to actually do the work, but I'm not gonna even try to do the work until I get these reviews done. These reviews have been stressing me out. It's been something I know I needed to do that it's like once I finish them, once I build them, then they compound. You know, they're growing my email list, they're growing my affiliate sales. It's just something that's really important that I need to get done. Um, so that's like a big priority of mine. Hopefully I can get them all finished on in January. I've got a couple weeks left. I don't know if I will, but I'll get a, I'm sure get a hell of a lot closer this month than I would have if it, if it wouldn't have been my goal. So I'll get as much done as I can and we'll see how it goes. Um, When, one thing I really wanted to do today was get workout clothes because I don't like I threw away any clothes that I had that didn't fit right that if like I would look at it and I'm like oh, I could wear it but it just I kind of don't like this or I kind of don't like that I just tossed it and um, hey just lay down dog lay down I just tossed it so now I don't have much and I really just wear black anyway um, got my black t-shirt black pants that's it. But I couldn't find any workout clothes that actually fit me good. I went into Lululemon. I've never been in there, but I just hear the hype and hear like people talking about how expensive it is. And I went in, I was like, holy shit, that's crazy. Like $1.60 for, for pants, for workout joggers. One twenty eight for a shirt. That was crazy, dude. Crazy, absolutely crazy. I don't know. That, but see, that's the power of branding, I guess. I mean... I don't know what their, their whole story is. I don't know really anything about them except Casey Neistat partnered with them because he wore them and they reached out to him. And anyway, it's like, that, that's kind of the power of just doing something you're passionate about and making good products. 
eventually it grows like they've been been around for a long time and i remember the hype like i think they started out with just women's clothing and expanded out to men and now they're kind of dug a stake in the ground as high-end sportswear um but it's also interesting i don't think that they're competing with nike and under armor and adidas i don't think they are like when you think about those brands like those are the ones you group together and when you think about lululemon i just think of them in a different category maybe it's because i'm a guy maybe girls think about it the same but i think it's it's a little different and again i don't understand the whole thing but i here's what i know those pants do not cost them anything close to 168 dollars they're making hella good money and good for them they figured it out they they figured out a way to build a brand where people will pay for that um it makes me think of the blue ocean strategy book i don't know if you guys have read that um pbd recommended it on like his what his website he had a list of 100 books you should read and that was one of the first few and i listened to it and i was like okay the book is boring as hell blue ocean strategy is boring as hell but the concept is so important the idea for any entrepreneur i think if you guys can struggle through it listen to the audiobook don't don't read the book um because like i said it's pretty boring but the whole concept is fascinating which kind of contradicts itself but you'll you'll get what i'm saying when you listen to the book the the blue ocean strategy is like just so here's what it is okay when you're in a market that's very saturated and very competitive it's a red red ocean okay it's a red ocean because everyone's bleeding out like everyone's price cutting everyone is just at each other's throat and if you're able to venture out and create a blue ocean you're essentially taking aspects of a red ocean and you're putting your own twists on it so that you're first to market and so that you can establish preeminence and once you do that you just have like is so much better right because you're it's less saturated you can set your own prices you've got preeminence so you are like known as the token brand and it almost seems like lululemon did that in a way um just kind of took a spin off of the fitness stuff and and really specialized in just one area like i think leggings was their big thing but then from that like they just really really hit that hard the legging stuff and then grew the brand around that and then eventually expanded out so now they're like at the same level as these other brands i, mean, I could be totally wrong like maybe they've been around since the fucking 60s and they just been grinding i don't know but they they like you know niche down built something very special and preeminent in their niche and then from there they have like the brand name they can venture out and and start to expand the products that they offer and do very well um like they created a a blue ocean so to speak that's starting to get saturated like all all blue oceans get get saturated eventually um i can't come up with any off the top of it'll just be easier if i just google examples but this will make sense The examples would be a lot better. Maybe. Okay. Don't get just give me some damn examples. I want specific companies or specific ideas. Okay, here's 10 examples. Let's see. Okay, here's the strategy. Tips on applying the strategy. Analyze the industry, define a problem, follow the ERRC framework, and then implement it. Okay, good enough. Circus de... Okay, Circus. Marvel. Marvel began as a typical comic book publisher in, the, in 1939, focusing primarily on young readers. Then as the focus shifted to college students, Marvel began to develop more complex characters. Superheroes came second to being people. Marvel generated a new value and used the Blue Ocean strategy advantages at full throttle. By inter- introducing the mar- multiverse, Marvel dived into a clear ocean as diverse characters were connected and brought together through various movies. As a result, Marvel became the comic book company number one. Became comic book company number one in the U.S. Nintendo Switch, I guess, is a good example. Health Media, Compete Nickel, Yellowtail. 
Uber. Okay, Uber is a good one. Uber is a, I was like, what the Marvel? Uber is a really good one. So, you know, you've got taxis and that, that whole thing, especially in just like really saturated cities is a red ocean. You know, there are a ton of different taxi companies. Everyone's setting the rates. Everyone's trying to undercut everybody. You have like more demand than you do customers. It's just very competitive, right? And so instead of opening up a taxi company, if you think about it, you like, you can take the taxi con concept and then apply it to like on demand or you apply like okay instead of having fleets of taxis how about drivers can just sign in when they want to when they want a taxi and use their own vehicle like you just you take one concept you add a little bit of a twist to it and you create a whole different company and so then when uber took off it's like boom blue ocean right because there there is no competition at first and now you've got uber and lyft and you've got these other companies but at first when you're first to market man that blue ocean is so powerful um so anyway, that's kind of what that made me think of iTunes meta. Anyway, blue ocean, a fascinating book. I think it's important to read like, because when I was building up my other brands, I took a lot of those concepts like, um, Doug DeMauro has, what is it? The Doug score. It, he uses it. He's a car review guy on YouTube and he had a scoring system that he would score cars and he has a spreadsheet with every car that he's ever reviewed scored together. And so you can just go look at the Doug score and you can see, wow, this, this car scored a X, Y, Z, right? My niche is bikes and reviewing bikes. And so it was just kind of like, I looked at that. I was like, wow, that's pretty intuitive to take what he's doing and apply that to the bike world. I had to create my own different markers and my own different algorithms to generate these scores. But like I could take that, apply it to my niche and then boom, then I have my own like preeminent scoring system. And there's just, there's a bunch of ways you can do that and think about other niches and how they're doing things. Like if I look at how, how the TV industry operates, and pull sections of that to building my YouTube channel and vice versa. Like you just look at everything and, and figure out what you can take from, uh, I guess it goes like steal like an artist from uh, Austin Kleon, very like another good concept, right? Like nothing is original, but you can, you build original based off of everybody else's ideas. Um, I don't know, man, fun shit to think about. Read, read books. You're going to learn so much. You got to read books. You got to read books. You'll get different ideas. You'll be very, very smart and able to build your brand. Um, anyway, that was a big, long tangent about blue ocean strategy, but I definitely recommend listening to that and just understanding the concept of it, especially while you're building a channel and as a brand, because I've had people like, Oh, I want to start a YouTube channel. I'm like, that's awesome. They're like, I want to do it for travel. And I'm like, do you know how many other fucking people are doing travel YouTube channels? Like, can you wrap your head around that? How many other people that have the finances to travel that have the gear already that have the experience? Like you, you're going to get crushed. You're going to get absolutely destroyed. If you just start up saying finance, right? I want to start a finance channel. It's like, good luck. Good luck. I mean, not to be so pessimistic, but there, there are huge fish out there. There are huge fish out there who are the best. Like imagine, imagine trying to start a tech review channel in 2024 and competing against Marcus Browley. Like you can't, you just can't dude. Dude has a crane to get gimbal shots of his phone. That's like half a million or something. I don't know. I watched his studio tour. It just, it's crazy. It is crazy. You will not compete with that. And you can, the only way that you can do that, in my opinion, the only way you can do that and succeed and take off is by starting like a blue ocean, so to speak in that area. Like if you want to do tech reviews, maybe you like, uh, I don't know, hot ones, I think is a pretty good example, not tech reviews, but where they take kind of the podcast spinoff and they add a twist to it and it can get them, it, it, it can catapult because now it's not like every other lame fucking person just interviewing people. There's, there's a story behind it. Like it's unique. There's, there's just more to it. Right. And so if you can think of a way to have preeminence and to think about what makes you unique on your travel videos or on your tech reviews, you will be able to stand out and you'll be able to get up 
up there with everybody else. But if you're just trying to do it, just like everybody else putting along, like they will crush you. And unless you find a new industry that nobody else is in yet, and that's possible too. But it, yeah, that like people are like, I want to do a travel channel. It's like, okay, how are you going to do it different? Because why would they watch your travel channel over anybody else's? Like what makes you stand out? What's different? And I think the easiest thing to find in that area is like by taking ideas or bits of pieces from other channels and um, putting that together and, and into your own, making it yours, making it unique. Um, yeah, that, that's the rant for the day. Um, I didn't work today. <laughs> I just like go back right back to what I was. I didn't work today. I just uh, uh, planned out my day a little bit. But since I've been cutting back on the delegating, there really wasn't a whole lot to do there. Made sure I got most of my tasks done that I had listed out for today and um, came back, edited one video. I don't think I'll edit another. Um, I'll edit this video tonight and then that's it. That's it. Oh, back to the health thing. What I was going to say is also, I'm also trying to eat super clean, like no gluten, no processed foods. And I, I just want to stay as clean as possible. I'm trying, I'm not a hippie, <laughs> but I don't know, man. I, I feel like we're killing ourselves with all the shit that we put in food and all this, all the, the, it's just, it's just bad. The water, like I'm drinking this water and I'm like, I've got a little dinky Brita filter, but I'm like, like what is in that water? I'm about to buy a water purifying system because I'm stressed out and drinking all this, this water. And then we, we eat food that's been like, that's got 46 million different chemicals in it. And we just like, uh, and then we get cancer and we don't, we, we can't figure out why we got cancer. Like I wonder, I wonder, and I'm not too concerned about living forever. Like I've talked about that before, I, but I just, I want to live good while I'm alive. And if I can extend my life by not eating shit, then I think that's worth it. I don't know. Some people say, well, food's too damn good and it's worth taking off a couple of years. And maybe it is, it is food is good, man. Processed food is good. Junk food is good. I love all of it. Um, but one thing I've noticed since I've started like the one meal a day thing and just eating the simple chicken, broccoli, um, potatoes is like, I think my mental focus is a lot better. Like my clarity, um, I think it's a lot better. I have a better head on my shoulders. I think like I've had days where I'll, I'll binge and I'll go to like Denny's for example, or IHOP or whatever, and I'll get a waffle or I'll get cheese sticks and like, I'll eat it, man. And I'll just feel like shit for the rest of the night. And it, it took me a while of just being on clean food before I'd noticed that. Like it really did take me a while. Normally you, you get, you eat all this junk and you're so used to it. Like you're going to feel like shit when you don't eat it. And so once you go through that phase of switching over and, and getting cleaner with the food, um, you'll like, you'll really notice your body will let you know when you eat something that's, that's bad. And it's, that's the only thing I think that stops me when I want to, like, if I'm like, oh, I really want pizza. The last, I, I got pizzas on pizza on new year's and just was felt like terrible for a whole day and that's the only thing really stopping me is I'm like oh that sounds really good and then I think about it and I'm like man I don't want to feel like shit tonight I, I don't want to feel bad like that temporary enjoyment of eating it is nice but I don't want to feel bad for the rest of the day so anyway lo lots of shit to talk about today since I didn't film the video yesterday I work tomorrow. I'm going to try and pick up more shifts and work more. I just have so much stuff I need to buy and do. And I'm going to order the stuff to fix the car soon. I think, I think it's going to be 300. I'll just do the cheap radiator with the sensor port and then the cheap sensor because the other radiators are like 500 and 600 and I'll just risk it with the $300 setup and see if they go together and everything works out. Um, takeaway from the day is always be on your toes while you're building your brand always think about different ways that you can incorporate something that's working for somebody else in a different niche into your niche and i think i think not only doing that when you start off but doing it as you grow like you think about all these company companies that are still around through all of these changes it's like they've been able to stay on top of that for sure like 
Netflix took out Blockbuster. If Blockbuster would have been thinking with their head, they like that whole concept of renting out online, like couldn't you do pay-per-view movies? So it's like, I don't know, it's not like it's a brand new thing. You just got to stay on your toes and, and like look at the other industries. You've never got it made. There's always someone who's going to be better than you. And if you don't look for that, and if you don't find that, you're going to get past. And the cool thing that you have an advantage of when you're just starting out is like you can be that person to pass them. And, and everybody's already kind of done a lot. So there's a lot to take from. There's a lot to learn from. It's not like you're starting from scratch. And so that's that's a pretty inspiring thing to think about. It's all out there. You just have to piece it together and build something great. So, yeah. This is day 107, guys. We'll see you tomorrow for day 108. Thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for leaving leaving the good comments and keeping me motivated, keeping me inspired. Um, yeah, we'll see you tomorrow.